Good afternoon. I'm Steve Schweiss. I'm the Commandant here at St. John's Northwestern. I'm the Commandant in the Military Academy. As many of you know, or may not know right now, we actually have a unique opportunity approaching FAST where we're going to split into two separate academies under one umbrella of St. John's Northwestern. We will have the Military Academy that most of you already know about and have experienced, but we will also have a classical leadership academy that will be operating side by side with the military academy. I'm currently the commandant and serving as the commandant here at St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. I'm serving in that capacity while our real commandant, a good friend of mine, uh, Chief uh, Command Chief Sergeant Major Eric David is deployed over in Afghanistan. He will be returning sometime this fall and he'll step right back into the role. But one of the great things, Eric and I have been working here at St. John's Northwestern Military Academy since 2012. And we started at the same time and we see eye to eye on everything. So Eric and I pretty much have the same mindset on how to run the thing and all the different things involved. Additionally, uh, we're looking forward to welcoming Chris Bielizna, Belizna, who is going to be the Dean of Schools on the Leadership Academy side. I've had a chance to talk with Chris during interviews, and Chris seems like an outstanding individual who's going to bring a lot of uh, things here to St. John's Northwestern, and I think we're going to work really well together in the whole resident life structure. Uh, one of the things at St. John's that most of you who have been here before know is that we have a lot of traditions. And those traditions aren't going to end just because of the fact that we are splitting into two separate academies. In fact, the academies, we look forward to working as one and sharing a lot of those traditions, expanding on them. You know, they might alter a little bit, but a lot of them will still stay the same. And, and we're really looking forward to seeing those uh, traditions thrive and survive here at St. John's. Um, the big thing about St. John's is that we believe in building leadership. That's why we're here. That's that's our main mission at St. John's. We we build leaders. We teach them uh, about leadership, and that's going to happen on both sides. Whether it's using that military model for leadership, in which we use that military structure, or whether it's on the classical side of leadership, which will use a more broad sense of leadership model to uh, teach from. Um, but again. Leadership is about teaching a young man and a young woman to not only be leaders of others, but be leaders of themselves, about taking that uh, self-responsibility and that initiative and learning to first be a good follower and then move on to those bigger and better things of being able to lead others. Because if you can't be a good follower, you really can't be a good leader. So that's going to be the same regardless of which academy an individual is in. The, the difference is, and obviously I am more partial. Hey, I spent 32 years in the Air Force. Um, I'm a little more partial to the military model, but that's just something I learned under. But the concepts are actually a lot the same, and it's just different on how they're implemented. Um, so basically what we do is we give the young men and women opportunities to use that leadership that we teach here. And uh, we provide, we act as mentors to train them and get them to understand exactly what's right and what's wrong. Our, our goal is guidance here. They're constantly being evaluated as they progress through the school. Obviously you had a chance to meet our academic dean uh, a couple weeks ago, Stephanie Eiler, who is overall on the academics. But we're the people who are teaching them how to do the leadership, the teamwork, those kind of things. And we can see that when they are here on a daily basis and we can evaluate, mentor, and guide them. Um, in the residence halls, we call them barracks on the, on, the lead, on the military side. In the residence halls, they have this opportunity to go into different leadership roles. In the military, there's the defined leadership roles of platoon sergeant, platoon leader, uh, company commander, and so on and so forth, they have opportunities to get into those roles. And once they're in those roles, we can give them a chance to see how they do. And again, teach them what's right, what's wrong. But the main thing is to see that they are able to start doing it themselves and on their own. Uh, 
on the leadership side, the titles are a little different. You don't have the same things, but as I said, the roles are the same. The, the leadership that they demonstrate as individuals, not just for others, but for themselves, that can be evaluated and taught all the time. One of the big things here that I always say, and I've said since I've been here from the very beginning is we are very honored and, and we're very lucky that parents and guardians of the kids trust us and, and make us the surrogates uh, while they're gone. But it's so important that we're a team as the adults in raising your children and bringing them up properly. So we wanna make sure that that is constantly maintained that uh, ability to work with the families. So our adults here are, we're gonna have maybe change the titles a little bit. In the past, you had the resident, resident faculty officers. That might change a little bit again between the military and the leadership academy. But bottom line is, is the adults who are in those roles are gonna work with you, the parents and guardians to ensure that your son or daughter is properly brought up. They are gonna be reporting back to you so you understand exactly where your son or daughter stands. And you're gonna be giving us ideas, maybe even giving us guidance at that point because you of all people know your son and daughter the best. Um, so again, it's really important. And that's one of our main goals is to keep them in the loop. Wanna talk about life in the barracks a little bit. Life in the barracks and or residence halls are pretty much, if you've been here before, it's the same, but it's a, it's a structured life to a certain extent. Obviously you're in a boarding school and you're in a boarding school environment. On the military side, uh, there's the military uniform. I'm happen to be in the Air Force uniform, a little more partial to that. But uh, here we have the Army R Junior ROTC. And on the military side, we are going to have where the, uh, the kids will be in the Army uniform. And one thing we're doing different this year is that we are also adding on in the military uh, polos and khakis, RA authorized uniform. So we're going to add that and that will be a uniform on different days that we'll be able to incorporate. But you'll still have the standard ACUs, the, the camouflage uniform, which is a work uniform and the dress uniforms and things of that such. On the Leadership Academy side, there's actually a committee and they are coming up with a uniform to wear. Probably, again, there's gonna be a couple different combinations, but you'll have the polo and khakis most likely as another one but you might have a blazer and a polo shirt and khakis or something along that line. So that will be the one thing like most schools that are boarding schools of this sort that you're gonna have uh, daily life in the barracks or resident hall is a structured daily life where you get up at a certain time, um, you go to breakfast, then you go to school, you get done, you move uh, during school, you're gonna have lunch, then you're gonna move on, have uh, sports activities and or other activities in the evening uh, or af late afternoon, I should say. And then in the evening, go to dinner. And then in the evening, you have study hours and that's on the weekdays. Then on Fridays and Saturdays, you would have a lot of time where it's free time and we would have structured activities that your children can participate in or that they might choose to go home. And we do have the option of five-day uh, boarding cadets. We have seven-day boarding, and we also have day, day students here. I wanna make sure I stress that regardless of which option your child or you choose to come here in, the opportunities on the leadership side are always the same. We are gonna be treating everybody the same. As long as they demonstrate the drive and the wherewithal and they wanna show their stuff, we want people like that in those leadership roles. One of the things I do wanna talk about here, and I'm sure all of you are concerned about given the world situation today with the COVID-19 pandemic is the concerns of possibly in the barracks, at the school, in a boarding environment, or even just having a day uh, cadet experience here, a day student is that whole mitigation of transferring the virus. We have uh, developed a committee, a working committee that is working very hard right now. We are studying other models from other schools. Uh, we are looking at worldwide. We are looking at the CDC and the World Health Organization, things that are being recommended by them. 
but you can be assured that when cadets and students return in August that we will be ready and things such as uh, in the dining hall, possibly if we have to doing rotating dining hours, uh, making sure that there is that social distancing, possibly having different tables open or at least several seats in between. Uh, we are making sure that we're working with our facilities uh, cleaning staff here to constantly clean the bathrooms, the latrines, and make sure those are cleaned on a regular basis. And then also in the academic classrooms, we are looking at things like uh, shields, building shields, so that there's a distance that prevents any kind of virus transfer. And if necessary, obviously we will look at also having uh, masks uh, worn. But again, right now we are in the working stage. We want to develop the best programs possible to give you as parents and as the uh, children who go here the best feeling that they are going to be protected from anything. So that's our main goal. We will have those things in place. Um, right now, as I said, we are looking at many factors, but when that day comes, we will be ready. I assure you of that. The other thing I want to talk to you about rolling right from that is uh, we do here perform regular health and uh, welfare checks of all the students, all the cadets who go here. The resident faculty officers are again not sure exactly what name we're going to go with when we set the uh, separate the academy. They will on a regular basis check the health and welfare, which is actually doing physical checks. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that we do, if you didn't know, we have a pretty much full-time infirmary staffed by a physician's assistant and registered nurses that we contract with Pro Healthcare uh, here on, on campus. Uh, they can handle just about anything. They are professionally medically trained, and those things that they can't handle, we are in close uh, working with through Pro Healthcare, Economic Memorial Hospital, and all the other uh, services in the area. So we do regular checks on all the cadets, all the students to make sure that they're okay. And if there's ever a return from different events, or excuse me, if they return from things like leave or anything like that, vacations, we do mandatory checks before they leave. And then again, when they return to campus, just to make sure that everything's the same, when they get back. So again, we're always watching out for the health and welfare of the cadets and the students here. Uh, in that light, in case you didn't know, my uh, assistant, she wanted to make sure that I told you all that we do provide transportation. If you have your kids who have things like orthodontic appointments, uh, regularly scheduled dentist, medical appointments, uh, PT, anything like that, we provide transportation. All we ask is that you coordinate with Anna Gagnon, who is the uh, my assistant in the military department and she, or resident life department, I should say, excuse me. And she will coordinate to make sure that you guys get transportation to and from those events. Additionally, when there are leaves for any cadets or students who are from out of town and need transportation to major mass transit, such as airports, uh, train, bus, whatever, we will make sure we coordinate that as long as the parents and guardians work with us to set that all up. But we are full service here and we make sure that uh, the cadets and students have everything they need. Last thing I'd like to talk about right now is uh, our cadre, our leadership cadre. So we are building up, as I said, to everything starting in August. This year with the change and going to two options for academies, the military and the leadership academy, we are building up to our leadership cadre training. That's actually where we take the cadets, the students who want to come, and we train them on how to be leaders. Our big thing is we in the past have called ourselves a cadet driven corps. That means that the cadets are doing the leading while we're doing the mentoring and guiding, but that's gonna be the same thing in the leadership school where the students who are in those leader roles will be doing the leading and the guiding of the other students. So on August 18th, we will be having our leadership cadre. In the past, we sent out select letters to those top cadets or those who expressed an interest. This time, a little different. What we did is we decided that all incoming ninth graders through seniors 
we would invite any previous cadet, any returning cadet, not new cadets, but those cadets who were here last year, they will be able to come to this leadership cadre camp training. At the leadership cadre camp, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go through, we've, we're gonna restructure the whole thing and we've already deep into that right now, but it's gonna be more intense. It's gonna be the leadership training. And we're gonna start out with basic principles initially that are taught on a mass level. And then those uh, students who choose to remain in the military academy, they will actually go into a more military structured style of leadership training. And those who choose to go into the leadership academy will go into training for those roles that are there. So we are again, offering this to everybody as a returning cadet in the incoming ninth. So if you're a freshman, if you're coming in as a freshman, all the way up through senior, we're offering you to attend this uh, camp. There is no additional cost. Um, this is something that's open to all of them. The only thing I will say, and I want this, make sure you get this out, if you are a returning cadet or the parent and guardian of a returning cadet, is there's no guarantee. If, you know, the, if this is a competitive thing. You have to show your stuff. This is your chance to show us that you have the drive and determination. That is what's going to make you. That shows that you're a leader of yourself before you lead others. So it'll be competitive. There's a small amount of leadership positions, both within the military academy and within the leadership academy itself. So come out, you're gonna get good training. You're gonna get a lot of good classroom time, a lot of good time of uh, practicing what you can do as a leader, and you're gonna gain something from it regardless of if you get that position. The one thing I wanna make sure that you are understanding is a leader is a person that can take things with grace. Trust me, in my military career, there were many times I didn't get what I wanted. Heck, I should have been a chief master sergeant when I was about 25, I, I thought, at that time. And there were a lot of promotions I didn't get. But it's about how you come back and show yourself each time and show how strong you are. So if you don't get it this time, you work hard and you will get it next time. Or you will prove yourself throughout the year and you may rise into a role. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think we have a great opportunity when this all happens. And I strongly urge that returning cadets and those who wanna go into the leadership academy who are returning, that they come to this uh, training. Again, it's gonna run August 18th through the 25th. So, as I said, I'm Steve Schweiss. I'm serving right now in the role of Commandant of the St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. And uh, I, want to give a second uh, to, I'll ask my helper here, uh, Paul Borns, if there's any questions or anything I can answer at this time. Okay, no questions. Either I did really good or you guys are all going, man, that guy, I don't know. I'm not going to ask him questions. I, 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 again, if you ever have questions, please feel free to contact me in any way, shape or form. Uh, I am always willing to talk to people. In fact, sometimes I've been told by my wife I talk too much, but I will try to answer all questions that I can and make sure that you get whatever information you need. So Alfonso Rodriguez Pena asked, as of today, what are the expectancies of the cadets returning on August 10th? The expectancies of the cadets. Is the government going to delay us? Right now, folks, we are still looking at starting everything on time. Uh, you all are aware of the world situation. Things change. Hey, like you guys, I want this COVID-19 thing resolved. I'd love to get back to where everything is normal again. But in the meantime, as cadets know who have been here before, we adapt and overcome. And that's what we're about. And we're going to adapt, we're going to overcome, and we're going to do our best to carry on. So right now, everything is set to go still as scheduled. Uh, sports camps, my knowledge is from uh, the athletic director, Mike Fink, Coach Fink, is that they're still set to start on time as scheduled. And then again, leadership cadre will start on time on the 18th. Now, could this change? Things happen. We don't know. And we, just like you, we adapt and we will let you know in a timely manner as soon as we can. But we're pressing forward and we're making plans to keep going.
What are some of the benefits of the Leadership Academy versus the Military Academy? Some of the benefits between the Leadership Academy and the Military Academy. Best way to put it is that in the Military Academy, there is going to be the expectancy that cadets join. And now eighth graders, by the way, incoming eighth graders can join. Colonel Kebisek, our senior military advisor, told me eighth graders can join junior ROTC. That is going to be expected. I mean, if you're going to go into the military academy, you might as well join ROTC since then you are actually learning all the military leadership model uh, techniques and ideas and everything like that. So that's going to be the acceptancy or expectancy. Going into the leadership academy, you're going to have a chance to broaden as the best way, broaden your horizons and look at things in a different light. There would be no expectancy of being in the junior ROTC program. A lot of the concepts, as I said, are very similar and you're going to have the opportunity to do it. It's just going to be another opportunity that you can pursue where you wouldn't be wearing the military uh, thing and you wouldn't be subject to the military style of leadership is the best way to put it. If you want to mention that with Dr. Wozniak next Friday, he'll go in tomorrow. So tune in next Friday. Actually, that's a good thing. And I'll close out with this. Uh, Dr. Wozniak, uh, Eric Wozniak, he's our headmaster here at uh, St. John's Northwestern. Dr. Wozniak will be on next Friday, which is June 5th. I strongly urge you to tune in on that day. Dr. Wozniak will be able to go over some of the things on the Leadership Academy side. He'll actually discuss it in more detail. He'll give you a lot of great insight that I right now probably don't have the answers to, but Dr. Wozniak will. So I strongly urge you to tune in next Friday, June 5th at 12 o'clock noon. Well, thank you very much. I hope you all have a great day. Uh, it, it's been an experience and I hope to see anybody who wants to come here. I also look forward to all the returning cadets and seeing all the parents and families and guardians in the future. Uh, Hey, August is going to be here faster than you know, and we'll all be back together. I'd like to lastly say that to the graduating seniors from this past year, if any of you are tuning in, you guys did a great job. And the extraordinary circumstances are something that I would have never expected in my lifetime. I know you would have never expected, but you guys adapted, you overcame. And for that, I strongly commend you. And I hope to see all the returning seniors uh, in the very future here. Take care, everybody have a good day. Perfect, I'll take it. And now you're still going. And looking like an idiot. <laughs> that was good. I didn't hear my phone.